today we're going to have a quick overview at how I model the Space Mountain Dome from Walt Disney World in 3D. I posted a scene recently about an hour long loop of this animation I did with Space Mountain. This is a quick overview of how I made this scene starting with creating the dome because that was the first piece that I modeled. And so I did this using software called Plasticity and then I imported it into Blender. This is my model. This was not just a quick button that I hit to make this scene. It actually took me weeks and it took a lot of work and time and energy and that's the kind of art that I like and that's what makes art special. It's actually built relatively close to the actual scale, 300 feet wide and 183 feet tall. It's pretty close to that. Real quick, if you go to preferences, if you do end up getting plasticity or doing a trial of it, you can go to performance and change your CPU fastening quality here depending on your computer. And then for navigation, you can even select Blender here, which will make the middle mouse to orbit and shift middle mouse to pan, things like that to make it easier for you. In fact, if I select an object and hit G, X, it'll be just the same as Blender. Or GY, GZ, GS to scale, S to scale. Now I can scale this piece. We've got the main body here. If I turn that off, you'll be able to see on the inside, all my parts are pretty well organized here. And when you import them into Blender, it will keep this organization really well for you. Now this was created with a combination of drawing some parts like these I call them C clamps here. That's not what they are. That's just what I'm calling them. Those had to be drawn and then extruded I'm using the line tool. I did the best I could to figure out this model just based on real photographs. So I have a couple of pictures down here. I will toggle them on and off and you'll see I was using photographs, real photographs as a reference. If I hit M, it'll bring up the material menu. I can increase the opacity or decrease it. You can move the picture around and line it up to where you want to line it up. This was really the best I can do. Now I'm not that far from Orlando. I grew up there. I love going there. Still love going to Disney of course. I had hip operation recently and as I was recovering I have not been able to go there and do any research or photo research or anything so I had to pull photos off of the internet to use just as references to try to understand the scale and how to do this thing. So one of the best ways to create things in plasticity and models is to use photos as a reference. Now in an ideal world you'll have blueprints and you'll have different angles of the shape that you're trying to build. I was like how could I get a top-down view? So of course I went to Google Earth and I was able to get a top-down aerial view. That helped me out with that. This has a lot of radial arrays in it. So if I were to delete all of these beams, we'll delete everything except that one. I just type in radial array with the selected and I have the center face here. That's not going to work because that's actually a slanted circle. But if I were to turn this off and I were to use something else as the center face, make sure that you have the right center, then I can create this radial array. And there was about 64 of them. Maybe there was 68 actually. When you get up into this radial array, this was much more complicated and it's not perfect, but when I got it into Blender, it looked good enough for what I needed it to do. I ended up having to play around with just how to do this because it's curved. Then I went in and had to actually manually adjust these individually to get them to line up a little bit better. And then another thing to note really quick that uh, I think is clever when you're modeling, you have to to think about how you're going to texture. I don't have anything like ZBrush. I'm trying to do things on a lower budget right now. I know there's a couple other pieces of software I should check out for texturing that I haven't looked at yet, but I'm trying to do everything in Blender. So when I made these pieces here, these were created just because they're a different color of paint on this wall. So what I did is I did an array and I made all of these as different parts and different solids, but simply to be able to just paint them a different color. So as I was modeling this, I was thinking about how it was going to be textured. And a lot of my modeling, I'm now more conscious of that. How did I make this main body? So what I did was I drew two circles. One will be center circle here. I'm going to drag that all the way out to here. Let's say this is my diameter. And then we're going to move that out of the way. Then we're gonna draw another circle here. We want this to be however big we want that first cone to come up to, which is pretty good right there. Let's go back and we're going to select this circle now. We'll move this circle over to match the other one. Let's get it centered. So now we just need to lower 
the bigger one to our bottom height. This is what's one of the features that's so cool about plasticity, the loft feature. So I'm going to select my two curves and I'm going to hit L. There you go, just lofted it. Okay, so how can we make this thing a solid? Let's try the thicken feature. So if we do the thicken feature, drag this yellow line, just a tiny bit is all it takes. Hit enter a couple times and now we have a solid. That's an example of how quick and easy that is. And plasticity is very user friendly. Once you're all done, you simply just export your model as an OBJ and the OBJ will import into Blender again organized pretty well with your parts. You can also color parts in here. If you'd like to color them, you can change your shader mode if you like working in a different shader mode. That is how I made the dome for that Space Mountain scene, the first one that I posted. There's a sign in that scene that I'll talk about next. I really appreciate your support. Be sure to subscribe, turn on alerts for when I post new videos. I hope I can do more of this for you and do more YouTube as the channel grows. Let me know if you have any questions or you wanna talk about anything 3d art related blender plasticity related photoshop i love talking about this stuff and i'm here for you until next time take care